Thank you for watching NTD Business. Coming up tonight, new details about how Twitter banned former President Donald Trump. We look at the internal discussions before he was kicked off the platform. Used car prices falling from stratospheric heights, hitting the lowest level this year. But by how much will they fall? And where are new car prices going? And Microsoft teaming up with the London Stock Exchange Group is the latest sign of deepening ties between the financial industry and cloud companies. That and much more coming up on NTD Business. Great to have you with us. Don Ma here. The latest installment of the Twitter files is out. It details how Twitter banned then-President Donald Trump in January 2021 after the Capitol breach. In particular, what happened on the day Trump was banned, which was January 8th. Independent journalist Barry Weiss dropped the files on Twitter today. Weiss was an editor at the New York Times and quit in 2020. Weiss reviewed the last two tweets Trump sent on January 8th and said for years, Twitter had resisted internal and external calls to ban Trump due to his status as a sitting president. But after January 6th, the pressure grew. According to the screenshots of the internal messages Weiss posted on Twitter, some Twitter workers demanded Trump be banned. Some claimed he was trying to incite violence, though without providing evidence. But one top official said she didn't see any violations of Twitter's policy. Less than 90 minutes after that, Weiss wrote Vijaya Gaddy, Twitter's head of legal policy and trust, asked whether Trump's tweet could, in fact, be coded incitement to further violence. For context, this is what Trump wrote in that tweet. Here's a screenshot. He said, quote, The 75 million great American patriots who voted for me, America first and make America great again, will have a giant voice going forward into the future. They will not be disrespected or treated unfairly in any way, shape or form. Some now suggested Trump was referring to the rioters at the Capitol when he said American patriots. Weiss says about two hours after that, Twitter held a 30 minute all staff meeting. Later, Twitter announced that it suspended Trump due to, quote, the risk of further incitement of violence. Weiss noted that some world leaders had issued Twitter posts that appeared to incite violence against other groups, but they were never banned from the platform. Trump's account was restored last month after Musk bought Twitter. Meanwhile, the Trump, meanwhile, Trump has indicated that he will not return to the platform. This is the fifth installment of the Twitter files. CEO Elon Musk has said more is to come. One topic will be the COVID-19 misinformation policy. And Twitter is set to launch a revamped version of its subscription service, Twitter Blue, today. Here's the twist, though. It's going to cost more for Apple device users. The service will allow subscribers to edit tweets, upload 1080p videos, and get a blue checkmark account verification. The subscription costs $8 a month through the web, but $11 a month for iOS users. Elon Musk issued a series of tweets last month listing various grievances with Apple. One of the criticisms was directed at the 30% fee Apple charges software developers for in-app purchases. Musk had also accused Apple of threatening to remove Twitter from its app store. But after a meeting with Apple chief executive Tim Cook, Musk tweeted that the misunderstanding about the removal had been resolved. And moving on. The highest inflation since the 1980s is making holiday budgeting more complicated for millions of middle class families this year. A Quinnipiac poll last month found nearly half of Americans have less in savings than they did a year ago. The poll also found 42% plan to spend less on gifts this season, and only 8% plan to spend more. The National Retail Federation says overall holiday spending hasn't slowed yet. But many families are making sacrifices to buy presents for their loved ones. Meanwhile, in a Gallup poll this month, more than half of Americans say rising prices have caused financial hardship for their household. And 13% say this hardship is actually severe. And U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen on Sunday acknowledged the risk of a possible recession next year. Meanwhile, a CNBC survey shows that 61 percent, almost two thirds, see a recession coming. All this on the heels of another potential 50 basis point interest rate hike by the Fed on Wednesday. 
But billionaire Elon Musk believes that if the Fed raises rates again this week, the severity of the potential recession could be amplified. So earlier today, I talked to a senior economist at bankrate.com about the topic. And now joining me is Mark Hamrick. Now, Mark, I've talked about this uh, uh, with a number of other economists about whether there's going to be a recession, but I want to get your thoughts as well, you know, as the senior economic analyst at Bankrate.com. Do you think if, is there going to be a re- recession and how likely do you think? Yeah, good to be with you, Don. A recession is inevitable. The question is, when does it emerge? What is its depth and duration? And it need not be inevitable in 2023. But I think most economists uh, would say that the risks are highly elevated. And uh, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has said that he thinks essentially the path is narrowing for a so-called soft landing because of the interest rate increases the Fed itself has put into place, as well as the weakness of growth that we see globally. And and so I think the key question here is, where does unemployment peak in the next part of the cycle? And and my own best sense is that it need not be nearly as high as in either of those earlier uh, very different circumstances after the great financial crisis that was uh, the result of a housing market bust. And of course, uh, the pandemic that was the result of of COVID, or rather the recession that was the result of COVID as well. So, so, so then let me ask you, you also mentioned uh, Powell a little bit earlier, and he said there's going to be economic pain, right, for this uh, upcoming possibly a recession. What, what do you think would that be, this economic pain, in your opinion? Well, you know, and I attend those news conferences. I, I plan to attend the one that he'll hold this week as well and have been doing so really since they began under Chairman Bernanke back in 2011. I would say uh, the Fed has already inflicted a fair amount of pain, but as you did rightly uh, point out, he's also said there may be uh, some pain to come. And so uh, the things that have responded most immediately and uh, early to interest rate increases that began in March, stock market moving into a bear market, we've seen the crash in cryptocurrencies uh, and we've of course seen um, we've seen the housing market in its own version of a recession with mortgage interest rates uh, moving up very high and and uh, consumer behavior um, you know sort of trailing on that trend and so what might be more pain to come would be uh, that increase in the unemployment rate and and seeing more of uh, sort of monetary policy being reflected in the job market and and more broadly with uh, consumer behavior and business behavior. And I just want to stick to this uh, consumer's perspective. If we do go into a recession, what can the consumer do to weather this uh, this recession? What, what, What can they do to protect themselves? Well, it's a little like buying a life insurance policy after you're uh, noticing that you're going to be involved in a car wreck, Uh, (laughs) meaning that the preparation that people need to undertake really needs to have begun already. And and the main thing for that, I would say, would be uh, having emergency savings, having some saving that can get through the storm. Uh, And, uh, you know, inflation is a very... uh, pernicious thing. Uh, It can be very damaging, and it has been very damaging uh, for households, uh, which had built up, by the way, a lot of savings in the early days of the pandemic, either because they had, uh, you know, federal payments provided to them, or or because they were able to save on something like the child tax credit that we had in this country. And that excess savings is coming down now, and my sense is it will be uh, further eroded because of the continuing high rate of inflation, uh, you know, that's ongoing and and will be seen in the coming uh, number of months. Do you think uh, consumers, if they're having trouble, should they should they take out loans? Should they uh, use credit? Well, uh, the answer to that uh, really changes depending on each household and individual's need. Uh, And that's one of the reasons why we counsel to try to lean on savings as a tool first, because that's obviously at a cost that's only of your savings account, right? Uh, You know, the cost of credit has been going up. The bank rate average for new credit card offers that that we track each week is now above 19 percent. And that's for the best qualified individual uh, or individuals. Uh, There are other forms of loans that people might be tapping, whether they're personal loans, home equity lines of credit, those sorts of things. And those are, you know, good tools to use. But we also don't want people getting in over their heads with debt, uh, particularly when there is a high risk of an economic downturn where they may have a harder time keeping up with those payments, which is quite necessary. All right. Thank you very much, Mark Hamrick, Senior Economic Analyst at Bankrate.com. Pleasure speaking to you today. Thank you.